I'm Tom Malagany for Inside EVs, and today we're going to take a look at the 2021 Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid. Now, since inventing the minivan segment in 1984, Chrysler has come out with many firsts for the minivan. They were the first to have an all-wheel drive minivan. They were the first to come out with dual zone temperature control. The first to have a power sliding door with obstacle detection when it opens and closes. Something really important, especially if you're hauling around kids. But in 2017, Chrysler became the first manufacturer to offer a hybrid minivan. And it wasn't just a regular hybrid minivan, it was a plug-in hybrid minivan. Now, four years later, they're still the only manufacturer that sells a plug-in hybrid minivan. Now, we know Chrysler makes great minivans. They've been market leaders ever since 1984. Nobody's caught up with them. But do they make a good electric minivan? We're gonna find out today. We're gonna to take this for a ride, talk about its features, how good of an electric vehicle it is, and then let you decide. But first, don't forget, click that subscribe button, tap the notification bell, so you don't miss any upcoming information here on Inside EVs. The Pacifica Hybrid has a 3.6 liter V6 engine combined with the two electric motors that are built into the nine speed variable transmission produce 260 horsepower. Now, it's no drag racer, but it goes zero to 60 in around eight seconds, which is more than adequate for this type of vehicle. I actually found it pretty fun to drive. One of the complaints I have with the Pacifica Hybrid is unlike most plug-in hybrids, there is no selection of driving modes. The vehicle always determines if it's in all electric mode or hybrid mode. You can't press a button and say, okay, I wanna stay in all electric mode for this trip. It doesn't allow you to do that. It always makes the decision. It's a little frustrating, uh, especially for me. I live about four miles from the town center and especially during COVID times, now I'm not making many long trips. I'm doing a lot of short runs back and forth to the center of town. So I might go to the center of town two, three, even four times a day. Now it's four miles from my house, so it's an eight mile round trip. It's in the middle of the winter now, so it's pretty cold out. Uh, and every time I get in the car, the gas engine turns on. Even if it's fully charged, and I know I can make the round trip without using a drop of gas, the engine has to turn on and warm up to assist the battery heating and cabin heating. So that's a little frustrating. Um, you know, I'd love to be able to select uh, electric only and do these little trips back and forth without having to fire up the uh, gas engine. The one good thing that Chrysler did with regards to the electric powertrain is they nailed it with the charging. The Pacifica has a 16 kilowatt hour battery and of that 16 kilowatt hour, somewhere between 12 and 13 is usable. They put in a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger, which is rare for plug-in hybrids. Most manufacturers put in uh, a 3.8 kilowatt charger in a plug-in hybrid because they say, well, you know, you don't really need the electric. You could always fall back on the gas. So we're not gonna put in that extra expense of having a robust onboard charger. I just got finished reviewing the BMW X5 xDrive 45e, and that has a huge 24 kilowatt hour battery. And BMW only put a 3.8 kilowatt hour charger in it. And that was frustrating because I could have gotten so much more out of the battery if I could have charged it quicker. That's not the case with the Pacifica Hybrid. You're able to recharge this vehicle if you have a level two charger that can deliver 6.6 um, .6 kilowatts in two hours. So you can dr go out, drive around, deplete the battery, and then come home. And within two hours, you've got a full battery for another approximately 30 miles of electric range. Chrysler did a good job with that. And uh, it's one of the reasons why, even though the engine uh, turns on whenever it wants to, and I can't control it, 
I'm still averaging more miles on battery than not with this vehicle because I do a lot of these short drives back and forth. Every time I come home, I plug it back in. So it's like every time I get back in the vehicle, even if it's only an hour or two after I just finished driving it, it's back to 100% charged. That's really important. They did a good job with that. Uh, one of the things they missed though is the charge port flap doesn't have a uh, warning indicator and that's probably something that maybe they missed because this is their first plug-in hybrid their first plug-in vehicle um, but if you forget to charge the flap you can get in the car and just drive away it doesn't give you a warning most EVs will say look when you turn the vehicle on big warning comes on the display says hey your charge flap is open better go outside and close it this doesn't do that it'll, it'll just let you drive around with your flap wide open um, and that's kind of old school thinking like uh, gas cars most gas cars don't remind you hey the flap is open uh, so you know Chrysler was like well why would we do that for the electric port but it's a little different um, it's really important to keep that port clean you don't want water getting in there. I remember my first electric vehicle years ago, I had a Mini E. I left the charge port flap open once and drove home in a rainstorm. I ruined it. I had I had to go back to Mini. It was like a $3,000 repair. They had to pull the whole charge port out, replace everything in the wires. So it's, it's really important that you keep your charge flap closed. And it's kind of important for the car to remind you, hey, um, the flap's open. Especially a vehicle like this, a minivan where you're hauling around kids, uh, you get distracted with the kids, you're trying to rein them in. It's so easy to unplug the vehicle, holster the connector, but then forget to come back and close the flap. So there's a miss on that one, Chrysler. The Pacifica's 16 kilowatt hour battery has to go somewhere. And because this isn't really a purpose built electric vehicle, Chrysler fit it where the second row stow and go seating usually goes. So you lose the stow and go on the second row seating with the Pacifica Hybrid, and that's a big hit. It's one of the great options that, or features I should say, that the Pacifica has. The Chrysler stow and go seating is the industry best. It's so easy to uh, just pull a lever, level, and fold the seats into the floor. You can do that on the second row and the third row. The third row stow and go still works, um, but the, you lose that with the second row. If you need that area for cargo, you have to physically remove the second row seats. That's a lot bigger hassle than just pulling a couple levers and having the seat fold down into the floor. Now that said, the Pacifica Hybrid has a ton of cargo space. Behind the rear seats, it has 32.3 cubic feet of cargo space. If you fold the third row seats down um, with the stow and go feature, you get 87.5 cubic feet of space. And if you remove the seats in the second row, it jumps up to 140.5 cubic feet of space. Huge fan, as you might expect, ton of cargo space. The lowest trim level for the Pacifica Hybrid is Touring, and that's the same with all of the Pacificas. And the MSRP starts at $39,995. That's about $4,500 more than the gasoline counterpart. Now, the Pacificas are offered in four trim levels, Touring, Touring L, Limited, and Pinnacle. This is the Pinnacle trim, top of the line. Um, no surprise there, whenever uh, manufacturers offer uh, media loans, they always give you the best of the best. This thing is beautiful, completely luxurious. The interior is so comfortable. Everything is, you know, top notch. There's even pillows included for the rear seats. And I, that's something that I haven't even seen on like $100,000 BMWs. Um, nice touch uh, Chrysler. Uh, but the interesting thing is, while the base trim, the Touring trim, there's about a $4,500 difference between the Pacifica and the Pacifica Hybrid. As you move up the line, that uh, uh, Delta shrinks. So the, financially, this makes sense before you even start factoring in the fuel savings. And I know most people have trouble with that with plug-in hybrids because while they can see what their overall gas mileage is, um, they can't really, figure in, well, how much did I spend for the electric? I know what I spent for the gas, uh, but how, how, how much did the electric cost me? 
If you're interested in really understanding how much you can save with a plug-in electric vehicle, the website fueleconomy.gov can be a big help. The first thing you do is click on the tab that says find a car and then on the subcategory compare side by side. I've chosen the Pacifica Hybrid and the regular gas Pacifica to compare side by side. Now, if you take a look at the EPA fuel economy section, you'll see that the Pacifica Hybrid gets an average of 30 miles per gallon when it's driven in hybrid mode. Now you compare that to the gasoline version and it only gets 22 miles per gallon. So the Pacifica Hybrid is a lot more efficient even when the gasoline engine is running. Uh, but it doesn't always run. So when you're driving on pure electricity, the Pacifica Hybrid needs about 41 kilowatt hour of electricity to drive every 100 miles. Now the price of electricity does vary around the country. And what fueleconomy.gov does is use the national average, which is about 13 to 14 cents per kilowatt hour. You should take a look at your electric bill and see about with your, what you're paying, uh, because that'll really give you a better idea of exactly how much an electric car will cost you to run. Now you can see underneath the uh, section where it says the miles per gallon, it shows you how far the vehicles go. The Pacifica Hybrid will go 32 miles um, uh, in all electric mode, uh, and then it can go a total of 520 miles when you count the electric range with how far it can go on a full tank of gas. The regular Pacifica Hybrid goes about 418 miles of total range because that's relying solely on the gas. Now, if you drop down to the most important part of this, you'll see it says you save or spend. And that category there shows you if the vehicle you're comparing will save you money in fuel costs over a five-year period as compared to the average new vehicle, or if you're going to spend more than what the average new vehicle will cost to operate. The Pacifica Hybrid will save you $2,000 in fuel costs over five years. That's a nice savings of about $400 per year. However, the regular Pacifica full gas version costs an extra $1,500 more than the average vehicle to fuel over the five-year period. So the difference in these two vehicles is actually $3,500 over five years or $700 a year in fuel savings. Now there's some other lines that show you uh, the cost to drive 25 miles and cost to fill the tank. But the real, the, the, the real gem in this comparison, I believe, is where it shows you the bottom line. How much do you save or how much do you spend? And the Pacifica Hybrid is going to save the average owner about $3,500 in fuel cost over five years. The Pacifica Hybrid has a nice center display. It's bright, easy to navigate. You can uh, find whatever you want in there relatively easily. Um, one of the things I do like is on the top corners here is the heating and cooling controlling for each side of the cabin. You press that and this is how you can adjust how hot or cool the air is on your side. You also turn on your uh, heated seats. Um, there's two levels there. Oops, I clicked off of it. Um, uh, and then the, also the heated steering wheel, which works really well. One of the things I found that was interesting on this particular model is you can see this metal ring around the steering wheel. Now, I don't know if this is just on this um, top end of Pacifica or if this is the steering wheel that all the Pacificas get. But in the morning, uh, when I come out to the vehicle, it's really cold now. As I said, you know, we're in the low 20s overnight, so the vehicle's frozen. I get in, I turn the heated steering wheel on, and it works really well. The, heat, the, the, the steering wheel warms up in a matter of minutes, but this metal ring here does not warm up. Um, so it's, it's, it's a weird sensation where the steering wheel is nice and toasty warm, but when you put your hand over it like this, you feel this cold stripe running across your palm. I actually um, got my digital thermometer out and tested it and the steering wheel was like 88 degrees 
and this little stripe here was 48 or 48 between 48 and 55 degrees depending on where I, I hit it with the temperature gauge so that's the the temperature difference and I mean it's not it, it, I find it funny um, but it, and it's weird because it doesn't heat up you could be driving for like 20 minutes and it still has a noticeable difference in temperature kind of a minor thing but it's definitely interesting the center display for the Pacifica Hybrid is well thought out. It's very easy to navigate um, between uh, you know, your media, uh, navigation, the different settings in the vehicle. Um, never really had any issue finding my way around. One of the cool things that I notice is it has this um, uh, camera system where you can view the all of the seats in the vehicle. Really important and good cool feature when you want to keep an eye on all the kids even all the way in the back and you can uh, change the uh, which seat selection you want to zoom in on so I think that's a pretty pretty cool feature the driver's display uh, actually is pretty good with as far as breaking up the hybrid and gas uh, details you really can see uh, when you're using battery when you're using the gas engine uh, when it's in regen and also uh, g keeps good statistics on uh, you know how many miles you've driven on both. Now talking about regen, the regenerative braking um, upon liftoff of the accelerator is not very strong, and I'm sure that's because Chrysler wanted to kind of make this a very comfortable transition for their customers that are used to the gas vehicles. Um, but you can make it a little bit stronger by selecting low mode here. Um, now the regen, um, I just lifted off. The vehicle's slowing down pretty, you know, fairly aggressively. Um, but when you put it back in drive, it really coasts. You do get regen, um, but it, it really feels like it's mimicking a, a gas vehicle that just coasts. Now, the one thing I will say is it also has a blended braking system. So it's not like you lose that regen. When you depress the uh, friction brake pedal, the regen increases. You, you're not um, automatically using the friction brakes. The vehicle will, uh, at first, just slow the vehicle down with um, the regenerative braking system. But if you need to slow down really quickly, that's when the friction brakes will kick in. And you can kind of tell when that's happening. Uh, it's not. Um, it, it's not probably not as smooth and as seamless as I felt in some other plug-in hybrids. There are automatic sliding doors on both sides of the Pacifica Hybrid, and either can be operated via a key fob. With the pinnacle trim, you get the option of caramel colored leather seats. Up front, you'll notice the concave dashboard allows for a lot of legroom. Access to the third row seating is really easy, plenty of room to get in there, and those rear seats can fit three adults comfortably. It's a wide vehicle. Uh, this vehicle had seven seat configuration, but you can also get it in an eight person configuration. Now, up front, there's plenty of storage compartments, including under the armrest. There's a wireless charging pad, two cup holders, and there's also a storage compartment under the center console. But I have to warn you, the different trim levels of Pacificas have different center consoles. So depending on which trim level you get, You'll have a different armrest and center console. Best thing to do is look on Chrysler's website and see what center console and armrest comes with the trim level you're interested in. I mentioned earlier that it takes only two hours to fully recharge the Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid from a level two source. I should have noted that the vehicle doesn't come with a level two charger. If you want to charge it faster on level two, which is 240 volt charging, you'd need to buy your own level two charger and also have a 240 volt outlet in your garage. But you don't need to do that. It will charge faster, but you can use the supplied 120 volt a portable charger that comes with the Pacifica Hybrid. Using that charger, the vehicle will take about 12 hours to recharge, but it still will recharge overnight. Your vehicle chances are is at home parked for 10 to 12 hours. So pretty much every morning you leave, you'll have a fully charged battery. Level two charging is better uh, if you're gonna make multiple trips in the same day, drive for a few hours, deplete the battery, come home, 
your home for a few hours, then run back out, you'll be able to drive the vehicle more, more on battery, but you don't need it to be able to really drive the Pacifica Hybrid on electricity. You could use what comes with the vehicle. Now, in every trim level, the Pacifica Hybrid costs less than its gasoline counterpart or fully gasoline counterpart uh, when you factor in the federal tax credit for those that qualify for it. And for us, there's really no reason not to buy the Pacifica Hybrid. It costs less upfront. Over time, there's a lot of savings as we demonstrated in fuel. And as long as you can plug the Pacifica Hybrid in, if you have an outlet at home, uh, we really see no reason why you wouldn't get this over the conventional uh, Pacifica. It just makes sense. Now, there are people that can't charge at home. If you live in an apartment building, if you live in a multifamily dwelling that just doesn't have access to electricity. Now, there's ways you can get around that. Some uh, workplaces now have workplace charging programs. They let you plug in at work. Um, and there's public charging. But, you know, in general, it's a lot more convenient if you have access to your own electricity at home. But when you take a look at the initial price, even if you weren't to plug in the Pacifica Hybrid, it costs less up front. So, it just makes sense to get this, and we don't understand why more of these haven't been selling, quite honestly. So the Pacifica Hybrid is definitely a recommended vehicle here on Inside EVs. That's it for the Pacifica Hybrid review. Let us know what you think in the comment section below, and please make sure you subscribe to this channel, you tap that notification bell, so you don't miss any upcoming videos here on Inside EVs YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you.